Hello and welcome to this video on Key Stage 5, Completing the Square. Well, now most of this is a recap of what you would have done uh, at a younger age, but the particular emphasis at the A level is using completing the square in an applied context, like the maximum height of something uh, and that kind of thing. Now what is completing the square? Well completing the square is just when we write a quadratic expression like this in this particular form. So x plus something squared plus something. And there might be something on front of this brackets as well. And the reason why it's useful is because it allows us to find the minimum or maximum value of a quadratic. It has a variety of other applications as well. For example in integration. So let's dive straight in uh, with this first question here. We want to write y equals x squared plus 4x in this particular form. So x plus a squared plus b. And just a note, by the way, that completing the square is not the same as factorising. Uh, if I write something in this form, that is not a factorised expression because it's not a product of expressions. And the way you do it is that you halve the number in front of the x, so the coefficient of the x, and then you do x plus that number halved, so it's 2 and then we do that bracket squared. Now what would happen if we were to expand this out? So if I just write it at the side, it's a bit of a side result. If I did x plus 2 times x plus 2, I would get, well, the x squared. I would get the 2x and another 2x, which is 4x, and I get the plus 4. Now I just want to have the x squared plus 4x. I don't want that plus 4, so I have to minus 4 to cancel it out, basically. So then I have x squared plus 4x plus 4, minus 4 will just be x squared plus 4x. And there we are. We've managed to write that in this particular form. Don't worry, by the way, that that says plus b and that is minus 4, because we could equivalently have written this as plus negative 4, so it would be more explicit in that form. But plus negative 4 is the same as minus 4, so it's the same thing. What about the next one? So we've got y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11. We do the same thing, so we halve the number in front of the x, the coefficient of the x, so it's x minus 3, half of minus 6 is minus 3, squared. And then basically, the quick way of doing this is just, if you square that number, well minus 3 squared is 9, and then you subtract it after. So that minus 9 will cancel out the plus 9 in this expansion here. So we're just left with the x squared minus 6x. But we still got the plus 11, and then that's going to give you x minus 3 squared, and minus 9 plus 11 is plus 2. So that would be the answer. Now for both of these, it wants you to identify the turning point of uh, the graph if, if you were to sketch each of these. So how do we do this? Well, if we draw the sketch, we've got the x and the y axis. Now, this allows us to determine where the minimum point of this quadratic is. Remember, quadratic in this case, if it's a positive x squared term, it's going to be that shape, a kind of smiley face shape, and we want to find the coordinate of that bottom point. Now, at the bottom of this quadratic here, the y value is at its minimum, so we want to make this or this as small as possible. Now anything that's squared has to be at least zero and therefore the smallest value we can actually get is zero. So what should we make x to make this squared thing zero? Well we should choose minus two because then if x was minus two, minus two plus two is zero and zero squared is zero. So x is minus two and if x was minus two what would y be? Well minus two plus two zero squared is zero minus four is minus four. So therefore the minimum point is minus two minus 4. And note, by the way, if we want to do a full sketch of this, that if we were to sub in x is 0 to find the y-intercept, 0 squared plus 4 times 0 is 0, so when x is 0, y is 0, so it's going to go for the origin. And we could find the roots, the x-intercepts as well, but we didn't ask for that here. So the quick way of finding the minimum point is basically you negate that value, so the plus 2 becomes minus 2, and you use that value for the y. So this, we negate it to get the minus 2, and this value we just use as it is to get the minus 4. So if we do the same thing here, if we negate that value, the minus 3 becomes plus 3, and we just use a 2, so it's 3, 2. So 3, 2 is here, and then it's going to look like that. And if we want the y-intercept, um, when we plug in x is 0, We've got 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 11 is 11. So that y-intercept is 11. Right, what about the next question? So 2, 
write 3x squared plus 12x plus 11 in the form a brackets x plus b squared plus c. So this is a bit harder because we've got something in front of that bracket this time, whereas we didn't before. Now the way I do this is I first look at the first two terms and factorise out whatever's in front of the x squared. In this case it's 3. So if I factorise out the 3 out of the first two terms, I have x squared plus 4x in this bracket, and I just leave the 11 alone. It's outside the brackets, minding its own business. Then what we do, if you copy that, you can then complete the square using this expression inside the brackets. So we already saw earlier that x squared plus 4x was x plus 2 squared minus 4. This is all within this outer bracket here. And then the final step is just to expand out this outer bracket here. So we do 3 times x plus 2 squared, which is 3x plus 2 squared. We do 3 times minus 4, which is minus 12. And then we've still got that plus 11 outside the bracket. And the very common mistake is that students drop this bracket in some way, and they don't do the 3 times minus 4. They just use minus 4. And, and finally, we just need to collect like terms. So we've got minus 12 plus 11 is just minus 1. And we are done. And we're going to do exactly the same now with uh, this question here, 3. But it's a bit more complicated now, because the terms aren't in the usual order. And we've got a negative number in front of the x squared. So let's first put it in the order we used to. So the x squared term is first. Um, I'm just going to put a 1 in front of that just to make the next step clearer. We've got minus 10x and we've got plus 4. So let's do exactly the same as we did before. We factorise out whatever number is in front of the x squared out of the first two terms. So minus 1 and then it's going to be x squared. And minus 1 times what is minus 10x? Well, it's plus 10x. And we've still got that plus 4. We complete the square inside this bracket. I tend to copy out the bracket and everything outside it first, then complete the square inside. So that's x plus half of 10 is 5 squared. And then remember, we squared that number and subtract it, so minus 25. And then we expand out this outer bracket. So minus 1 times x plus 5 squared is just minus 1 x plus 5 squared. Minus 1 times minus 25 is plus 25. And minus 1 times 4 is minus 4. Then let's just have a bit of a tidy up, minus 1, x plus 5 squared, and that's plus 21. And it's sometimes nicer to write the positive term first rather than a negative term first. So we could write that as 21 minus x plus 5 squared. And then finally, this applied question here, and these are very common in the new spec A-level papers. The height h for hamster can be found using h equals 16t plus 20 minus 4t squared, where h is in metres and t is the time in seconds after which the hamster was thrown. Determine the maximum height of the hamster. So basically, the trajectory of the hamster over time, because this is a negative quadratic, because it's minus 4t squared, um, it's going to be something like this over time. So over time, the height of the hamster increases, and then it drops down, because we know a negative quadratic looks like a frowny face shape. Uh, we could put the y-intercept in here if we wanted. If t was 0, then that's 0, that's 0, so the height would just be 20. So we've got the y-intercept of 20 here. And we want to find the maximum height of the hamster. So this maximum height here. So we just need to find the turning point. So if we do that, we got 16t plus 20 minus 4t squared. And we want to complete the square in order to find the turning point, uh, the maximum point of this quadratic. So let's write it in the usual form. We want the t squared term first, plus 16t, plus 20. Then we factorise out the minus 4 out of the first two terms. So we've got t squared, and that will be minus 4 times minus 4t, plus a 20. Then complete the square inside this bracket here. So we've got t minus 2, because that's half of minus 4. And then we square that, which is 4, take it away, it's minus 4. This should always be a subtraction here after, regardless of whether that's positive or negative. Expand out the outer bracket now. So we've got minus 4 times t minus 2 squared. And minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16, plus a 20 as well. So that is 36 minus the 4t minus 2 squared. So we need to find the maximum value of this. Now, remember that we said that the minimum anything squared could be is 0. 
yeah? And we want to maximize this. We want to do 36 minus the smallest possible number so that we end up with the biggest possible number, the maximum, yeah? So if we know this is at least zero, then the smallest we can actually subtract is zero itself. And that will happen when t is two. So when t is two, that whole thing will be zero and you'll end up with 36 minus zero, which is 36. So h will be 36. And to be honest, we could just use what we did before. Remember, we negate this value to get the x value, which in this case is the t value. So we've got 2, and we use the other value, because we could have written this after. We use this other value as the y value. So that's 2, 36. And then the actual height of the hamp at that point is 36 metres. So h is equal to 36 metres, and that is the answer.